Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Quirky Inspirations. I have the absolute joy and pleasure of introducing you to Leila Ansari, who is one of the VIP authors in The Mad Book, Making a Difference, Ways to Magnify Abundance, Vitality and Freedom. So Leila, as you heard, is one of our three VIPs, and we're going to be doing three interviews that are coming out just before our book launch. So that's why you've caught this one now. Listen in, because you're going to be amazed at this woman's tale. I'm not going to give you too much, because obviously we want you to buy the book. But I'm going to ask you, Leila, what's the experience been like for you? No, let's, let's backtrack a minute. As well as being an author, Leila is a phenomenal coach. Mum? Actually, no. Do you know what? You do it. You tell us. Who are you? <laughs> Give us a bit more of a flavour of Layla. Hi, Wendy. Thank you so much. I'm very, very honoured to be here today and really appreciate the time you're giving me to, um, yeah, just just share my story, a bit of who I am. Um, I'd like to say, first and foremost, I am a woman of the world. Um, yes, I originate from a part of the world, which is Northern America, but I consider myself to be a woman of the world. And therefore, you are one of my sisters of many sisters that I've had the pleasure of um, connecting with and sharing my life journey with, which which enriches further who I am. Beyond that, I am a daughter. I am a sister. I am a mother. I am a businesswoman. And now I will soon be an author. So thank you. And, and professionally by day, yes, I, I help people connect deeper with themselves. Um, I, my specialty is relationships. Mm. I love everything about relationships because we don't really recognize and no one ever teaches us how important our relationships with people and especially with ourselves is so paramount to our success. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we're coloured so much, aren't we, by the relationships that we were born into, mm -hmm. and our our sense of self is is coloured and, and almost shaped mm -hmm. by where we fitted into a family and and what was reflected back to us. Most definitely, most definitely, and so much more. Because because mm -hmm. even beyond that, it's it's those tribal inheritances. Mm. that that everyone just takes on board and it becomes a part of our persona um we accept it as this is me this is what mm -hmm. i've been given mm -hmm. but it's so much more than that so mm. much more than that don't you agree oh yes oh yeah. yeah um because it's actually being able to recognize what you've been given so many times we don't ever question what we've been given. We just take it on board. It's like, you you know, someone's handed you this box full of stuff and you don't question what's in the box. You, they just say to you, look after it. It's yours and make sure whatever you do, you preserve it and you pass it on after you put your stuff in it too and give it to everyone else along the line. Hmm. So and we go, a, okay. And it's an ever increasing box, isn't it? Which is, as you say, if we don't take the time to open it up and look and see, is the contents, does that work for me? Absolutely. Does it work for me? Do I value this? Is this mm. box getting heavier than it needs to? Is there anything within this box that, maybe will give me a better insight as to why I do what I do and maybe even something in the box that no longer is enriching my life and therefore maybe either if I if, if, if it isn't something that I feel can serve others let me offload it and leave it behind mm -hmm. <laughs> to make the to make the box lighter yes because so much of as you say we're held and weighed down by our own circumstances and also that of previous generations. My mothers, my grandmothers, my great-grandmothers, my great-great-great-grandmothers. Mm. Everyone is kind of that ripple effect where everyone 
is taking a little bit more of someone else's baggage, but I like to give it a box because it's so important to be able to have that box Mm. to take things out of and also to preserve and put things into Mm. for when you have a rainy day. Yes. And as you say, when you, when you've got that box, the, the, the analogy for me of a box is, is something that I, I honor mm-hmm. because I'm carrying it in front of me mm-hmm. as opposed to baggage, which I'm usually dragging behind me mm-hmm. or holding on to in one hand and it's weighing me down. Yeah. 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 Modern, modern times. This, is, got this is your treasure. This is your treasure yeah. box. Yes. Box of treasures. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it, it, it makes up a part of who you are but it's not the sum of who you are and so many times what's in that box is not of value to us as an individual as it was to our predecessors yes our our far our forefathers our foremothers so i i love being able to now recognize all of who i am and where i've come from Mm-hmm. and acknowledge it, embrace it, and expand on it by being able to say, what is resourceful for me? What is serving me? Mm-hmm. What is going to actually help me get to where I need to go to or where I want to go to moving forward as I carry this treasure trove of, 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 of goodies mm-hmm. with me? And and they all serve a purpose, you know, they all serve a purpose of helping me through tough times, helping me through grief, helping me through um, fear, you know, courage, Mm. resilience, gratitude, love. Mm. So how much, I mean, do you know much about your family line? And I mean, I, I know lots of people go into sort of family history and do the ancestry type thing. But but what I'm hearing from you, I don't know that it's necessarily um, physical things that have happened, but, but more of an energetic treasure trove. Uh, am I right in that? Unpack that a bit more for me. I think it's both. You know, it's both. I think that when you have a balance of life, you have to have a balance of things. Some things are emotional and some things are physiological. Okay. You know, I think the way that I look is is a physical part of my richness and who I am. And mm-hmm. that will that will come from my my heritage of of where I came from. Mm-hmm. And even that is a part of our acceptance in life of what we've been given. Mm. So many of us spend most of our lives not accepting the vessel in which we've been given to then carry our spirit in. You know, whatever spirituality you believe in, whether you, you you know, you're monotheistic or you're just spiritual in a non-denominational way. Mm -hmm. We as human beings have a tendency to tear ourselves apart and pick out all the things that we don't like about our physical being. Mm -hmm. And we haven't even bothered to look inside to see what also are the components that make us who we are. Mm -hmm. And so when you talk about my heritage, my heritage is, is, is very much a part of my emotional journey as Mm -hmm. much as my physical journey as a woman Um, and, and coming into my own power, my own empowerment, my own grace, my own beauty. Um, Mm -hmm. And I mean that from an internal point of view of, Mm -hmm. I feel more beautiful because I accept who I am. And so that comes outward, inwards, outward, (laughs) from the inside out absolutely. yes absolutely yeah. absolutely um because I, I I'm I'm a black American woman um who has very very mixed um roots of 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 a lot of places you know and then in England they call you a Heinz 57 or a a Bitsa you know you're you're a bit of this and a bit of that um you know you go to France and people say I'm Matisse you know, mm-hmm. um, in England, you, you, you're 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 a half breed, 
-hmm. also. I've heard that saying. Mm -hmm. Um, And this is where I feel like I'm a woman of the world because the historical nature of where I came from, everyone has something along their family line. There are no pure blue bloods. (laughs) It doesn't exist, even for those who consider themselves to be blue bloods. There is no straightforward one line of lineage. And so some of us are more pronounced in, in how we look because of the diversity of um, our, our, our culture and our background. Um, some of it was done because of power. Others has been done to them out of power. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, uh, talking about all of that is a whole nother kettle of fish. Mm-hmm. Um, I just like to embrace the richness and the opportunity that I have been blessed being who I am and no. the richness of who it's made me be. Yeah. yeah. Stop. <laughs> I mean, I was reminded that when you were talking about how, how we often pick apart, pick out and pick apart how we look physically mm. and want to change it. Mm. Back in the eighties, everybody had big hair. And yes, I had a perm. My hair took 45 minutes to take for a perm. And I still sat there determined to be in on vogue, you know. Mm-hmm. And after a while, I went, oh, this is not worth it. When do you accept the fact that you have dead straight hair? Accept it, acknowledge it. it it's a bit quirky because it does that, not even that but hey we're talking about quirky inspirations I accept my quirk from a physiological perspective as also an energetic perspective Mm. yeah we do we we focus on the what's wrong don't we always always it's just human nature Mm. and and uh, sadly no one ever tells us at a very foundational age to change that to shift it to to Look at yourself and celebrate Mm -hmm. your differences. Celebrate the beauty of who you are. Um, That's something that takes you a lot of trial and error and, um, you know, picking yourself up, dusting Mm -hmm. yourself off. And, and, and like I said, for some of us, it's, it's more of a journey than others. Um, For me, you were talking about the eighties and the eighties, I was begging my mother to straighten my hair and to relax my hair and to do a, a, what you would call a reverse perm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I spent all of my young uh, pubescent and young adult life having straight, you know, ironed, <laughs> chemically treated hair. Um, and like I said, then my my 20s and 30s, was a kind of like, what do I do with this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and now in, in, in my later years, I look at it sometimes and I think, oh, you know, I would love to look so much more demure, so much more quaffed, as you would say, in, in your part of the world, um, or tamed, as we would say in North America, a little bit more glamorous. But you know, this is this is this is me. This is me. This is pure, unadulterated me. And for many reasons, I have had to accept this is a part of who I am. Hmm. Um, and and yes, it's it's my signature almost. It, 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 it's gorgeous. It, it's <laughs> it comes with the personality, you know? I'm a bit of a zing. So is my hair. Yes. <laughs> Bubbly and big and vibrant and vivacious. Yes, and has it a was. mind of its own, just yeah. like I do. Has a mind of its own. So why would you want to tame it, exactly. embrace it, and, and allow it to be free? <laughs> and that that's the point. I'm, I'm getting back to the book for a minute. That was one of the things that you were bringing out in your in the, the chapter in the book, isn't it? That you've had lots of experiences where things have not gone according to script. And your, your, your book is all about your, your chapter is all about life is an improv mm. and how we we go through life. And well, there is no script. Mm. Can you share with us a little bit? Give us a teaser. Of, of well, your- in order to give you a teaser, I'll just 
share with our audience a little bit about me. So, (laughs) you know, like most children, you grow up and depending on your parents' circumstances, you have to go with the flow. You have to go with the flow. You don't have a choice as a kid. Your parents change jobs, opportunities, life circumstances. You have to get up and you have to move Mm -hmm. and you have to adjust and um, embrace the changes. And and I think that in, in nowadays, parents are, are, are making more of a conscious effort to include their children. It's a different time from when you or I were, were, were growing up where it was just like, this is what the parents are doing. You're just going to go along with it. I'm sorry that you're experiencing this, but you'll find a way through. <laughs> yeah. You know, now parents are like, oh, let's think about the kids and how is this going to impact the kids? Mm -hmm. So I didn't have that, you know, and and I'm sure there were families out there of our generation who did have that type of upbringing. But generally speaking, no, we make the decisions. We're the parents. This is for your everyone's best interest. Mm -hmm. And you're we're just going to make a decision. So my parents, I, I was very fortunate enough, much to my you know, dislike at the time to have lived internationally at a very young age. The first mm-hmm. time I lived internationally was when I was eight years old and in a completely different culture to anything that I had ever experienced before, different language, different um, in, weather environment, um, culture environment, food, just everything, everything. Mm-hmm. It was a complete physical and sensational uh, overload of of having to adjust. Mm-hmm. And I think that was the beginning of me really learning how to be resilient and making things work for me right. in any type of circumstance, because that's what children do. Children are so much more pliable than we ever will. If you were to tell me right now, right, we're moving next week and it's to Timbuktu. I'd Mm -hmm. be like, no, I don't think I want to go. And actually I'm going to say, I don't, I don't agree. And can you give me more information before you just uproot me and take me away? Mm -hmm. Whereas you don't have that option as a kid. So you have to make do. And my story is all about how I think this is my unpacking it. Through having that type of childhood, I then was very much as an adult of trying to subconsciously control the outcome of things. Right. Control the outcome of things and finding great disappointment when things wouldn't turn out how I had romanticized them. Mm -hmm. Because we all have an image or an idea of how we want things to pan out. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that the universe and fate will sometimes cause us to twist and turn and go up and go down and you arrive to your destination. It just not be what you expected it to be. Mm. It's like, it's like, I'll give you a good, I'll give you a good analogy uh, of, of like the other day I was out and we were looking for jam donuts. And the person who I was with was on a mission to find a a jam donut. We went to three different bakeries Mm -hmm. before landing upon finding these jam donuts. So we were driving all over town on the hunt, which I found quite entertaining, looking for this jam donut. And when we arrived and we got the jam donut, they were quite disappointed. The jam donut didn't taste, wasn't, wasn't what they wanted. It was fresh. It was made on the day. It was still warm. It was full of succulent, beautiful, homemade jam. But it wasn't what they mentally were expecting. And that is the same thing for life. It's like when we truly embrace life without this expectation, without the script, Mm -hmm. the experience is so much more richer. Mm. And so I brought this person's attention to the fact that you wanted the jam donut, you wanted it fresh, you you, you know, all of those things were ticked, Mm -hmm. except the criteria that you were attaching it to another experience that you had somewhere else. Yeah. That was never going to be the same. Mm -hmm. 
it couldn't be the same mm. unless it was made by the same person. <laughs> but even then, you're different from the person who had it last time. Absolutely. It could have a different variation. But yeah. for some reason, they had it in their mind and, and they had an expectation. And when their goal was achieved, there, there still wasn't a satisfaction mm. because it wasn't what they expected. Yeah. Whereas when I pointed that out to them, they actually said, actually, it isn't that bad. It, yes. Okay. Yeah. It does satisfy that urge or that need that I wanted to fulfill mm-hmm. of having a fresh hot jam donut. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Nice one. Isn't it wonderful where you, life throws you lessons mm. on the spot? Yeah. You may not be in a position to pick it up at the time, whereas somebody who's coming alongside you as skilled as you are in, in, in coaching can go, do you see what's going on here? Mm. Do, 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 take the observer role for a minute. Take a step back. Mm. Ah, yeah. Like, it's, well, mm, yeah. It's not as bad as I thought it was when I put it in my mouth and went, oh, that's not good. <laughs> I went, really? <laughs> How so? What's not good about it? Let's 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 analyze this a bit. Mm-hmm. And then the perspective will shift. So um, that's that's you know the script, letting go of that script and just not not falling foolishly into life, but setting goals and I guess dreams, dreams, because a goal and a dream can be slightly different in my mm-hmm. interpretation you know mm-hmm. you can dream of something and then you set your goals to achieve that dream yeah but in order to do that you slightly have to be able to let go of the control of the process and that's why we struggle isn't it because mm. we like daily to be in control <laughs> daily daily mm. yes about everything, everything, yeah. One of uh, one of the people that I'm I'm very close to talks about the fact that we want to be in control. I mean, bless her, she's worked with me for a number of years and sorting out my ducks in a row. Mm. Necessity, and she went. You know what? You will only ever have roughly two percent of understanding of what's going on in this life. Mm. And you, those little duckies will not sit in a row for your 2%. Mm. So let them go. Don't take up all your time and energy trying to get the little buggers to stand up. Because they won't. Straight in a they, row. They, they will be all over the place. Mm. Trust that the 98% that you don't know mm-hmm. is all right. Mm-hmm. It will carry that 2% that you insist on knowing. And you don't need to worry about the 98%. And you know what? You'll figure it out. Because that 98% is in you anyway. Absolutely. You just have to trust the process. Yes. Just have you to trust what? the process. I get so frustrated. Well, I did get so frustrated when people would say, trust the process, trust the process. You. Ah, but you know what? I'll give you another good analogy. It's like when you're looking for something. The more and more you try to look for it, the more you get frustrated, the more you almost start having anxiety because you can't find that thing that you're looking for. And people go, oh, go back to the last spot that you had it. And you go back to the last spot that you had it and you still can't find it. And you're tearing everything apart and looking all over the place. And and and, and what we don't realize is that by doing that, we're restricting our breathing because we're stressing because our, our stress levels are, 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 are heightening. So your brain is not getting the full amount of oxygen that it was getting before you were looking for the thing that you're looking for. And if you just let go, mm. still have it in your mind that you have to find that thing. It's amazing how your brain will lead you to it. Yes. <laughs> Without you even thinking about it consciously. But yeah. you have to just let go, take a deep breath and go, okay, I'm going to lay that to rest. Let me do something that I know I'm, I'm, I'm able to do mm-hmm. and, I, and I'll get the results I'm looking for. 
Mm-hmm. Let me focus my attention on this, or let me go have a cup of tea. Or I know, all of I a know sudden, how to make a cup of tea. All of a sudden, there it is. Yeah. In the place I didn't look because I didn't think about it, but I didn't even think to look there. And the brain has led me there because it knew that 98%. Mm-hmm. We just didn't give it a chance to show itself to us to to come to the surface. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we are still on the same page, and that's one of the reasons that I was so excited that you came in on the book because we we got this making a difference theme, ways to magnify abundance, vitality, and freedom, and your chapter looks at abundance in. Oh, yeah. Abundance, vitality and freedom. You, you, you managed to <laughs> get all three of them in there. How, how would you describe what you're saying in your chapter without giving too much away from those three parameters? We are we are so abundant as human beings. You know, like I said, we don't give ourselves credit. I mean, even even my little six year old of how much resources she has within herself. Mm -hmm. When I'm, when I turn her direction, when I help her pivot and look within and recognize and acknowledge all the things that she has already within her, how things seem so much easier. And this is where the abundance is that, that, you know, we're, we're programmed to feel or to think that the abundance of life, the abundance of, of, of consumption mm-hmm. of, of things is what will fulfill us in feeling complete and abundant. And, and gratitude is important, but it is so much more than that. You know, mm-hmm. when people talk about, oh, doing gratitude journals and things, that is the beginning of unfolding and opening up that beautiful lotus flower of abundance Mm. and and so I, i i like for myself um of of always looking at that glass half full of always waking up no matter how you go to bed whether you've got some niggles and some aches and some pains or stresses on your mind to know that should I wake up the next day, I have a clean slate Mm. of opportunity, of possibility, which is abundance. Like that's like, 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 that's so much like to think, wow, I get to start all over again from where I left off and do it so much better than I did it the day before. And, and, And even from what you're saying, that's also encaptured the vitality and the freedom as well. Absolutely. It's vital the following day because you've laid aside all the stuff that was there before and let's start to afresh today. Just let it go. Yeah. Just let it go. I'm not going to take it to bed with me. Mm. That is the worst place. Like I, I, I get to my bed. I'm like, this is, this is my, this is my sanctuary. Mm-hmm. This is my boudoir. This is, this is where I now need to be able to relax reset so I can be the best version of myself the next day beautiful for that vitality which then leads you to the freedom yeah yeah precious precious on that note then as you go to sleep one of the things I'm very keen about is internal scripts Mm. And I work so with important. speakers around this in terms of if what goes on in here does not match what's coming out of here, your nonverbals will give you away. So authentic speakers do need to be head and heart aligned because the energy goes through, guess where? The voice. Mm-hmm. So on that note, do you have an empowering script? Some people call them mantras. Do you have an empowering script that you can share with the audience of something that you go back to regularly, maybe even daily, to help bring you back to your North Star, to center you for that abundance, vitality, and freedom? Ooh, that's a very, very good question. Um, for the, as long as I can remember, and I didn't even know it was a thing. 
um, until doing so much more work on myself and and becoming so much more attuned with myself mm-hmm. um, is literally I I talk to myself I I almost like a form of meditation mm-hmm. I I lay down in my bed and I tell my mind to clear my mind and to let go mm-hmm. and to actually do a body scan right. of letting go and feeling wanting to feel my body sink into the bed. I'm almost like looking for that sensation that I'm not holding myself in the bed. Mm -hmm. I'm actually starting to melt away into the bed. Mm -hmm. And anything that is going on in my mind, I silence it. And and I have, I've, I've done all types of techniques of counting of, you know, uh, if you want to, you know, I'm quite spiritual. So like I said, mantras or meditation or, you know, things, I don't know if you want to say Hail Marys or whatever, but repetitive, almost like putting myself into a trance to yeah. let go of whatever it is that is lingering, that is holding my mind awake in awakened state mm. to allow myself because I, I've been in that place where you can't sleep or you won't allow yourself to sleep because you have so much stresses or pain, whatever it is that you're going through. I know what that feels like. And to suffer from insomnia and not being able to have good sleep is so detrimental to being able to think clearly, process clearly respond clearly it, it, it it's 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 the backbone of everything our sleep mm. and so i now know if i want to be the best version of me do not deprive me of my sleep <laughs> what and it needs to be a good quality of sleep so yes the internal dialogue um of letting go like you know it's mm. the end of the day whatever i didn't do i either have to acknowledge that I need to bring that forward and recognize and sometimes just go, okay, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. I didn't have such a productive day or I didn't do those things that I needed to do, but I'm not going to lay here and beat myself up about it. I'm not going to play out scenarios in my head. I am literally going to have the internal dialogue that tomorrow's another day. Tomorrow's another day. Great one. Tomorrow's another day and let it go. Mm. Yeah. 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 Because as you say, you can otherwise you can go back to that. Well, I had 10 things on my list today. I did nine of them. But the one I'm going to focus on is the one that I didn't do. Or just playing the scenarios out, like, oh, what did I do today? What? Why didn't I do what I needed to mm-hmm. do? I could have done that. Oh my God, I'm such a, you know, I'm an idiot. Or, oh, how could I, you know, how could I forget that? That mm-hmm. was so important. Or mm-hmm. why wasn't it in my diary? Or, you know, mm-hmm. we can just replay the stories or the scenarios in our heads and drive ourselves crazy in the meantime your body's saying I need to repair I need to detox I need to you know do all the things that I need to do to reset you Mm -hmm. to be the best version of yourself yet you're not from here down you're not helping yourself so if if you're not shutting off yeah and 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 once again, having a a really strict, strict, the last thing you're looking at is not your phone. On those nights where I'm caught out and I go, oh, I haven't checked my socials or I haven't responded, and I get into bed with that mm-hmm. framework prior mm-hmm. to laying my head down, I generally take longer to go back to sleep or to fall asleep. Mm. So it's like having that cutoff time where either I, you go and you plug it in, you step away from it, you have your night routine, Mm -hmm. but whatever hasn't been done on the phone, it doesn't get done until the next day, switch it off airplane mode, whatever, turn it off. Like, I don't understand people who go to bed with their phones on and, and, and this, this kind of You've told yourself, well, just in case something happens in the middle of the night, I need to be able, like, what are you going to do? 
you get the call not, that somebody died. Be or, you're like, not going to be in any fit state to respond anyway. Yeah. So I, my, my, I've got tons of friends who say, how do you go to bed without leaving your phone on? And I say, well, because what am I going to do at two o'clock in the morning when I get that call? Mm -hmm. I'm so much more able to attend to whatever the middle of the night has brought me by waking up the next day and dealing with it. Unless my children were out or something like that in the middle of the night, then of course I'd leave my phone on to make sure that they're home. Mm -hmm. But that's a whole nother, but generally speaking, mm -hmm. the phone goes off. I'm done. I'm resting. Present for you. So letting it go and tomorrow is another day. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Layla, for my sharing pleasure. with us your internal script. So we will put all of the information for Layla in our show notes. Remember, the Mad Book comes out in America on the 7th of August, in the rest of the world on the 8th of the 8th, the 8th of August. So come and join us for a party. Yes. Magnify your abundance, vitality and freedom by being mad. So now, see you later. Bye from us.